very good morning. Welcome to Breakfast with Dan Walker and Louise Minchin. Now, an antiviral drug pioneered to treat Ebola will be made available to some hospital patients with COVID-19. Health Secretary Matt Hancock says this is probably the biggest step forward in the treatment of coronavirus since the crisis began. It's called Remdesivir. It works by blocking virus production within the cells. Early data from UK trials suggest that it can cut recovery time by about four days for those hospitalised with coronavirus. For the time being, uh, and due to limited supplies, it will only be available on the NHS for those receiving oxygen and most likely to benefit from the treatment. Well, let's speak to virologist Tom Solomon, who's been advising the government throughout the pandemic. Um, nice to see you. We're, I know you're a regular on, on BBC Breakfast when we have various updates to talk about with things like this. So how excited are you about the potential of this drug? Well, I think this is really good news. Uh, it's really the first good news story we've had in, in the last three months in terms of treatments. And at last we have a drug that is showing that it does have some benefit. It's not, it's not a panacea, it's not a cure-all, it, it's not a magic bullet, but it does show some improvement in some patients. And, and, and that's the first time we've had it and it's now going to be available on the NHS. So it really is a positive story. Um, and is it on particular patients that it's uh, particularly effective? Yeah, the study, it was actually an international study. It did include some UK patients and it was on about a 1,000 patients. And what it showed was that, on average, the time for recovery reduced from about 15 days down to about 11 days. So that's a modest uh, effect. And also the patients that it was most effective in were actually not those who were so severe they were on intensive care and not those that were very mild, but it was the sort of in-between patients who needed oxygen. So it, it, it's, it's a step in the right direction, um, but it, it's not going to change everything dramatically. And there are ongoing studies that are also really important. Yeah, on those sort of other studies as well, we mentioned that you are advising the government one of those on uh, sort of which area research goes in. Are there other drugs out there on the horizon that could have an impact as well? Well, yeah, there's about 150 trials going on around the world looking at other drugs and other combinations in different populations. One of the biggest ones is, is, is actually in the UK. It's the biggest uh, trial of all, actually, with more than 5,000 patients. And this is one that has been supported by the UK government. And uh, this is looking at, at a range of different treatments. And it has the ability to change the, change the treatment during the trial, depending on how different drugs are doing. So um, the other exciting drugs that are in development are the... Um, using patients' serum. You may have heard about that because that's been... Uh, talked about quite a lot recently. So this is using the blood of people who've recovered from the virus to treat other people. And that, that's quite an exciting approach as well. Uh, but those studies are ongoing. Yes, we talked to somebody yesterday who had a, an extraordinary amount of antibodies and his blood was, a plasma was being used. So that's, we have talked about that. Um, can you also tell us about a vaccine? Because, you know, there was so much or is so much hope um, relying on a vaccine. Are we getting any closer to one? Yeah, the, the, vaccine, the vaccines are continuing to be developed. They always take longer to develop than, than treatments, than, uh, especially because the, the drug trials that have been happening so far are largely using drugs that we already have uh, for other conditions. So the vaccine studies are progressing. The uh, study from uh, the, the vaccine from Oxford has moved on to the next phase, which means now that there are thousands of people going into, into the trial, including here in Liverpool. We're recruiting people into the, the vaccine studies here. But they, they always take longer because you have to give the vaccine and then you have to see what effect it's had on people's immune response. And ultimately, you have to see, has it reduced the number of people who get the, the disease? And um, although it's great that the number of cases are coming down nationally uh, because of all the social distancing measures, what it does mean is that these kind of studies take longer because you have less disease around. I'm conscious that we're not trying to give our viewers sort of false confidence this morning, but it, it, there seems there are a number of reasons to be positive uh, looking into the future in terms of the treatments available and, and where we will be weeks and months down the line. I, I think you're absolutely right. I think we, we should be positive. Um, I always thought right from the start of this uh, that we would get treatments quite quickly because there's such an enormous international effort, you know, pretty well all other research has stopped and everybody is, is researching coronavirus in one way or another. So I think we will get treatments. Um, I've always thought we would get treatments before vaccines. Uh, vaccines, I think, is going to be a longer story. But the fact that we've got treatments, we've got the first positive news about one which is going to be available in the NHS, and I think more will come. So I do think that, you know, ultimately we will 
we will have ways of treating this disease and hopefully also vaccinating against it in the future. So it's really lovely to have some optimism, actually, isn't it? Um, <laughs> yeah. we, uh, I'm, I'm going to bring it down now. Um, <laughs> just, uh, just looking ahead, and we are beginning to see, you know, things beginning to be eased. We know things change, for example, in England um, on the 1st of June, you know, quite considerably in some ways, then on the 15th as well and going forward in other areas. Um, how concerned are you that, you know, we need to kind of stick by guidelines and that, that there could be, for example, a second spike? Or do you think, we, you know, we have done enough so far? Well, I think what we've done so far as, as a nation has been great. We've really followed the lockdown, most of us, and um, uh, it's meant that there's been less contact among people, so the virus has had less places to go, and that's, that's really why the number of cases has dropped. And from here, it's going to be really important to see uh, what happens to disease transmission, this all-important R number, the reproduction number. As long as we keep that below one, then the virus will, the disease will continue to, to disappear. But it's just, it, it, it's a bit of a juggling act, I think, uh, easing the lockdown and then uh, seeing what that does to transmission. But hopefully we'll be able to ease the lockdown without too much new transmission. And uh, that, that will mean that we'll slowly return back to some kind of normality without such large numbers of cases. And especially if we do have treatments for the cases that come, then uh, again, that, that, that will make things a bit easier to manage. Thank you for the positive news, uh, Professor Tom Solomon. Always good to talk to you. Lovely Thank to you. talk to you again. Thank you so much. I remember so many times you used to visit us here in the studio. One day, perhaps again. Ah, those were the, the, old, <laughs> the old days. Different very different times. Thank you very much. <laughs>